Well, hello everyone. This is Robin Carter with Robin's Creations. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator out of Flower Mound, Texas. And today I am here to share my third video of alternative cards using the October 2024 paper pumpkin kit called Nests of Christmas. If you missed my other two videos, be sure and check those out where I made eight alternative cards from one card base. So if you needed a bunch of cards, and I believe we get five of each card base, you could have a total of 40 cards with those alternatives. I'm going to try to do the same thing with the second card base. I don't quite have all eight worked up yet, but I'm here to share with you what I have already with some of the panels. So before we begin, let me thank those of you that have subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much. And we are really close to getting 3,900. I believe we need like 15 or 16 more subscribers. So if you have watched my videos or maybe you're brand new and have yet to subscribe, I would appreciate you hitting the subscribe button below. I like to share tips as I go along the way and I do make my cards real. So if I make a mistake, I show you what I would do in case <laughs> I make a mistake. So you may make those same mistakes and learn some tips there. So let me share a few of the Stampin' Up! promotions that are going on for a couple more days. As I said, I'm recording this on October 29th. But until October 31st, Stampin' Up! has a few specials that you don't want to miss in case some things are on your list. The Kits Collection is still has some sales going on on all the kits in the Kit Collection. Now, those are not paper pumpkin kits. It's their normal kits. So they're up to 30% off. Not all are 30, but at least all are discounted. So if those are on your list, be sure and grab those. And also a couple more days left of the starter kit promotion. So the starter kit promotion is you get an additional $30 worth of products for the starter kit price of $99. The normal amount is $125, but the special is you get an additional $30 worth of products to pick of your choice. Now, whether you choose to do that and try to start your own business or as a hobby demonstrator, which just means you're going to get a discount on your own purchases, um, you can do that as well. So I will have links in the video description box of this video where you can uh, click to learn more about how to join. And always, if you have any uh, questions, you can leave those to me in the comments. So let's switch down to hands down so I can share the upcoming paper pumpkin kits and then we will get started. All right, so here are the next two paper pumpkin kits, which you can subscribe to. So uh, if you're brand new to paper pumpkin, what these are, it's a monthly subscription of a kit that you will get in your own mailbox. It's like Christmas every month. And it includes a kit with everything you need to complete the projects as is. Now, I like to make alternatives out of these kits and uh, make some more of an avid style, but I like to stretch my kits as far as possible. And one thing I really like about it is it helps me get started with some different colors I may not always go for. So it gives me, uh, helps my creative juices keep flowing every month and working with all my products. So I'm just going to point out right now that there are some Mary more Mary tags and more dies add on that kind of coordinate with these. You can use them with any kit, but you do have to be a paper pumpkin subscriber to order these. The item number is 165639. And I've enjoyed having these throughout the whole year. I even bring some back, um, not just to use on those kits, but they're good to use on any of your paper crafting uh, cart or paper crafting. I'll just leave it at that. So I really hope they continue this in 2025. So Stampin' Up! if you're listening, I really love these add-on dies. So let's get started with my alternative cards. Actually, um, here is what you get if you are a Paper Pumpkin subscriber of mine. You get a little sleeve to store your stamp sets as well as a one inch square of the coordinating cardstock. So you can store your ink spots upside down so the ink is always ready for you. All right, so as I said, let's get started. So uh, with my first alternatives, I used this card base right over here. And yes, we do get five. And so now it's time for me to work on some alternatives with this card base. So I have a few of those to share with you. 
Let me put up my instructions so they don't go missing. And I'll actually pull this out. So this is the card base I haven't worked with yet. And I have some alternatives I want to share with you. I'm not sure if this is going to be a part one or <laughs> part one of two. But I have worked with this side and this side. Um, I hope I will for sure get through with these two. And if time is running too long, I will save these for my next video. So let's not lose that card base. And of course, I still have the envelopes I may do something with. So this kit is going to offer lots of card opportunities. Okay, for my first alternative, what you're going to need is, as I said, we're going to use the window cutout. And this is much like the, is it called Meandering Meadows dies? So if you wanted more window die cuts, you could do that. Okay, we're also going to need a thick white card base and then a panel which I've used a lot um, for these alternatives this is a nice neutral it's called basic beige and it's new um, it's not in any color family it's a standalone as well so we're going to need that and then I'm going to make this one a Merry Christmas so I went ahead and die cut one of the Marys from the add-on dies which let me see if I have those I think they're over by my die cut machine but it, oh no here they are <clears throat> so I store those in the same packs that I do my paper pumpkin stamp sets and I, I did buy two of these because it helps me just to be able to cut a lot so you get this nice big tag and of course you know by some fancy die cutting you can make this in shorter sizes or longer if needed there is the Mary die and then this nice big burn die, um, which I like. So those are the dies included. All right, and I have cut the Mary and I cut it out of white card stock, but I did put some adhesive sheet on the back of it. You can't really tell because it's <laughs> clear. So um, we'll use that in this card. And then I showed in my very first video how I color the cardinal in the stamp sets of this kit, which I love that cardinal. And then I have stamped already a Christmas. Now this cut is what I offer on my Etsy shop, our cut files for the sentiments in this kit. So if you're interested in doing that, you can do that as well, or just stamp it on a little strip of cardstock would work. All right, so what I wanted to do for this is also make a piece of garland. And I think I have some, actually I did a red too. And I wanted to get your opinion of which one you like best. And then we need a piece of garland. Now that garland I have used out of the coordinating bundle that goes with this kit called Winterly Tree Tops. So it has this nice piece of garland that um, I have pre-colored. Now I want to apologize to everyone. I had said there was not a shaded spruce uh, blends in the last two videos, but there actually is a shaded spruce <laughs> blend. I think there's one green that they don't have and I think it's garden green. So um, I actually looked through my stash and there it was. So I'm not sure. Yeah, this one I did do with the colored shaded spruce and I added a little two-tone um, coloring with the light and the dark so you can see I have a little stash of pre-done material here I also have a cut file on my Etsy shop for the sentiments in the winterly treetops so this is the a friend like you brings me happiness um, my favorite one that I've been using on these cards are thinking of you always it's right here so um, that works out quite nice if you don't need Christmas cards. So these can be any occasion cards as well. Okay, so before we attach this to this, I want to start building my scene. So I'm just going to kind of lay it. This is how I kind of come up with my alternatives is I just start laying pieces down. And um, let me keep my <laughs> completed one nearby so I don't... Uh, mess anything up 
Now one thing I wanted to do is add some ribbon down here to give it more color. So we do have ribbon in our kit that I forgot to mention. So you could simply put that there if you don't have any additional ribbon and then put your sentiment over that. But I happen to have a stash of real red <laughs> cart, uh, ribbon. But I also wanted to point out that Current is a shaded spruce ribbon. Its item number is 164224. And that would also work nice here. And then I haven't shared this in a while, but I'm going to share my ribbon saving technique. So I just find a bottle. Um, you can use a medicine bottle. I happen to know this one works. My tack it over and over. And here's what I do when I create my ribbons. This helps me not have to um, pull so tight on my cardstock and bend it. So I'm going to make a bow, and this is always more challenging on video than <laughs> when I'm just doing it for my own cards. So I cross it over. I bring up this one, and I hope it's long enough. I like a tinier bow than, I, than a big bow usually. And then you pull, and I'm pulling mainly with this right hand so I don't run out of... Um, run that through. So then you can just keep pulling until it's as tight as you like. This one's working out quite well. Sometimes I have a hard time getting the top to look right, but all right, so get it like you like it. Okay, that's pretty tight and about the size you like, and I think I like that. And so you can see here, I still have it attached to my spool, so I haven't wasted any additional ribbon. And then I'm going to cut this like the it is there. Okay, so I can wind that back up, stick it in my little bucket over here. Okay, and then you take it off your bottle and you have a little loop here. Now you can decide if you want it right in the middle, you would just cut this down the side. If you want it uh, off to one side or the other, you could cut it shorter or, you know, here. I'm going to do this one right down the middle. And the only thing you have to remember is uh, which ones are your uh, ends to tuck under your cardstock versus don't pull your little uh, bow ends there. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this to my basic beige piece. I think I want this over here on the bottom. So I'm going to put the ribbon on this side. So I'm just going to take my tear and tape and put some pieces here. You need a nice strong tape. So any uh, super strong um, ru tape runner would also work. I know we have some tear and tape in this kit as well as other kits. So I just use up as I go. All right. So then I'm going to center this bow and tuck it around the card base. So there we go. And I sometimes I cheat and I put a glue dot if I want my um, bow <laughs> to hang down. That one's doing okay. So let me just get out my silicone mat so the tear and tape doesn't stick to my uh, paper here. Uh, all right, so let's also build this scene. So as I said, I did color this one with the shaded spruce blends. Another option is uh, a blender pen and the ink that goes with it. There's not a water watercolored pencil that's shaded spruce. And then I shared on the first video how I colored this cardinal. So this one is done with the Cherry Cobbler watercolor pencils. I have also done some with the Cherry Cobbler light blends and then just a little bit of dark. But you can use what you have. Actually, I'm going to use glue dots for this so I don't make a mess. So let's attach the cardinal to the garland. I did kind of look through my Evernote. I did a video on how you can find all your supplies. And I looked and I really couldn't find any other garland in my stash. But I felt pretty free at liberty to use what they say is a coordinating bundle for this set. All right, so let's, I like him like that, kind of behind 
laying inside the garland. All right, and then we're going to do a Merry Christmas. Now you tell me which you like. Here is a white with the Christmas. Let me straighten that up so it doesn't look as funny. Or do you like red? You know, this one I'm going to make the red. My one I've done already, I'll show you um, when I finish building. This one is done in white. And then you can see I'm completely done. And let me know in the comments which one you prefer. All right, so let's glue this card front onto our card base. I do love using my multi-purpose liquid glue for some wiggle room to get it centered in my card base. So by the way, if you're if you're wondering how I organize and can inventory all my supplies, I did a video on how I use Evernote. Uh, there's also alternative ways you can do that, but that way I can search by keyword that I have tags for, like wreath, garland, birds, animals, trees, whatever I have made tags for. And then it lists all my stamp sets, dies that I have. Um, that can do that. So I'm going to make my scene right here on this and I want to put this whole thing up on dimensionals. So let's make our scene first. The red, it's easy to see my tear and tape, which is good. So be gentle taking it off so you don't stretch your die too much. All right. And then let's put it down try to get it down straight the first time. Um, I could also bring in the glad press and seal if I wanted to. Um, that little technique to get off little fussy dies. And then we're going to have our Christmas. So let me put it down as well. And he can hang off a little bit. That's good. All right, and then in here are bird and garland down. Put him at the bottom. Straighten up my Christmas, I think. Okay, so there we have our scene. And I'm gonna get some dimensionals to um, raise this up on my card base. I don't think I mentioned, I did emboss this piece of cardstock with the coordinating uh, birch 3D embossing folder. It's one of those big folders, which is nice because you can put your paper wherever you want to on around the embossing folder and get different patterns that way. I think that's gonna be enough. If you've watched me often, you know I love embossing folders, so I I, <laughs> I have a hard time doing just a plain panel. All right, let's hope I don't have to get my head over this, but let's just kind of center that, tighten up my bow some more. All right, and so there is my first alternative, just using this window. So here's the one I did ahead of time, and it has the white Mary. So which one do you like better? I think I'm preferring the red just because I love the um, bright color of that and it kind of coordinates with the bottom part to even it out. All right, so let's put these away. Um, I do store all my card components in these five by seven pretty thick plastic things and they're part of what I call my favorite things. And while I clean off my desk, I'll just tell you that those are items that Stampin' Up! does not sell that I find helpful in organizing my supplies. I am an Amazon affiliate, and the links to where you can get all these products are in this video description box. And at the very top is a link to a brand new um, Amazon storefront that I have. So if you just want to go there, it's much easier than going back and forth to copy each link. Um, those products are there in my Amazon storefront. And as a affiliate, I get a few pennies back at no cost to you um, when you use those links. Thank you for those of you that have done that before. All right, our second card 
is uh, we're going to use the window opening of the piece we just used so we use the inside piece now we're going to use the outside piece again I have a thick white card base and then for this one I have a few different options for you so we may make more than one and I've trimmed both of these down to four and one eighth by five and three eighths just because I like to show a little white border around these as well so um, when you're doing that be sure and look to try to get equal um, amounts of this design on each side of the window uh, for the five and three eighths I did take it off the bottom all of it but this one you'll want to kind of look um, when you're trimming you may have to trim a little off this side and a little off that side so that's just a tip there and I'm going to start with the easiest one so um, this is some designer series paper that is part of the coordinating suite collection and it's called <laughs> cinnamon stuck to it and so it works quite well behind here you can see that and I cut this to three and a half inches by five and a quarter inches and then that way it saves a little you can see the back side but it'll still attach to our window all right so that makes a nice scene there and of course you can put the cardinal um, there as well and your sentiment so I'm just going to lay some of these out to show you some options that one's real easy and I only have two card bases cut right now so I'm going to show you my other ones that um, are a little more avid but I love the look of that so a current embossing folder still is the snowfall 3d embossing folder and so I've cut a same uh, piece that will fit there with the uh, snowfall embossing I think that shows right there all right and then I thought it needs a scene so I brought in these trees now these trees come from a kit that I love or a bundle that I love not a kit and it's called frosted forest so um, if you follow me you know I used this tree in the last month to make some nice fall trees and I really wanted to use these Christmas trees as well but in the dies is this this piece right here all right you can see it's upside down but so there are the white trees what can I show them better okay now I took the 3d snowfall and I put this just at the top so that I had some snow <laughs> on the bottom of, of the ground as well. All right, so here's what I want to do with this one. And we're going to make this one. So I want this to go down flat. And I want this to be raised up so it looks like two layers. So do I be brave and put that down first? I, I can make another <laughs> if this doesn't work. You might want to do a full panel if um, if this doesn't work we'll do a full panel on another card all right I'm talking a lot my throat's getting dry already let me get a sip <laughs> okay so now we want to get our window and we want to adhere this to that and I, I'm bringing it up as much as possible to try to get some ground there. And I may just tear that or put that right down with my tear and tape. Actually, I can do multi-purpose liquid glue. I'm going to put it on the bottom of the window. And by the way, I trimmed this to three and a half. All right, and let's attach attach that to the window I might have to go in with tear and tape anyway just to make sure because it's barely on there so let me just hold that down with some tear and tape okay I'm not even going to pull the backing I'm just going to 
do that to keep that still on there. Okay, we're doing good. All right, so now I want to go with dimensionals. And obviously you could make this a shaker card. If you're a shaker card kind of maker, you would just need to use the foam adhesive strips to make sure it's a solid um, border around all of this. You know, snowflakes in here would be really cute. But I'm going to keep it as <laughs> basic as I can. Okay, and then one more there. All right, so before I take off backings, I always like to look and see if it's the look that I want. And I really like that. It's like a, um, gives the look of something in the front and something in the back. And I also like the shadow that the tree casts on those. Now, I want to share a few more things. I did cut some of the trees with the dyes of that frosted forest. I think that's the back. Here is the detailed dyes that are included in that. And then I made some trees. So um, with this one, I used the mass for, I think these are A and B versus one, two, three. So I did A and B, one in old olive and the detail in mossy meadow. And then on the third one, I went through with um, some paste, what's that called? Um, texture paste, and I went through that with my mask. Now, don't worry, you can take it immediately to your sink and wash it off. So that is that, I don't know even if that shows, but I, I feel it. And unfortunately, it kind of turned green, I guess from my ink. I wish it were more white. So for my little tree, I did something different. I brought in, let's see if I have it on my desk, the enamel effects white, and I rubbed it in with my paste, and then I took it immediately to my sink. Now, unfortunately, this does not show really well on the video, but I can feel it, and it's white like snow in there. So I did those and I'm like which one do I want to do but of course I gotta have a bird oh here they are they are the pearlized enamel effects basics and it's one five six three one zero is the item number for those if that's something you would like to add I did think about going over each of those and adding the white but it would have to dry for a long time so I left that off so here is Another bird. Now this one you can see I did in the um, cherry cobbler blends. So you can decide if that's something that you like. Instead of, here's to compare, the colored pencil. So either one is nice, I think. Very rich in color, that one is. All right, and then I did do the thinking of you always that I wanted this one. So now we can play and let's say, do we like the little tree behind here? Let's move the bird. That's kind of nice. Or do you want a detailed cut tree? And I'll probably glue these to the back so that they're in the background. So any of these I really like. So you can let me know in the comments below which one you like. Here's the big tree. You know, I really like that one. It gives a lot more color. And then I could always put the sentiment on this side. All right, so this one I'm going to do with my big tree. So let's remember where that is. And so I just hold my finger down and squeeze some glue <laughs> behind there and then while it's still wet I kind of put this back to see if it's like I like it make sure it's straight that it's not a leaning tree okay so that's that as I said we could 
play with any of these trees. I really like this whole set. And if you bought it to use with the last alternatives, at least we're using it again for these. So let's take off the backings. I love, I love that. I have to say, I love it more than maybe the flowers because we get two sets of trees, but it takes all the guesswork and artwork out of um, making these because I'm not an artist. If you've ever <laughs> seen me, well, those birds, for instance, I just take one color and go with it. But these make you look like you're an artist and it gives so much detail. Okay, so let's get this in the center. Again, if my hair gets in there, I apologize. Okay, and then let's add the bird. There. Okay, now I am going to put the sentiment on this side, and I stamped this one in real red, but I need a dimensional to hold it up where it's going to um, go into the window piece. Here they are. But just a half of one. Okay, so I didn't make one of these ahead of time because I wanted to um, show you each of those. And we only have, well, we have five of these, not three. And I can already see I did not get that centered. So he's not stuck down good yet. Here's what I do. I gently peel it up. told you I keep these real and I may just have to all right, so you don't need all of them up just a few where you can turn it now if you're adhesive I'm getting the snow piece all right so let's twist this a little bit I think I kept all my adhesive if you need to put if your dimensionals are no longer sticky Here's what I do is I take my multi-purpose liquid glue and add a few dots to those so they're nice and sticky. And that's more centered. I see a little border here and there. And now I need to put my bird back on. You know what? It's going to have a hard time sticking to that. I may need to use some tear and tape, especially since he's kind of just barely hanging on there. But let's give him some tear and tape and put our cardinal back on the scene like that. And I did the thinking of you always. Let's put a little glue there. Okay, so there is one alternative that you can make. And as I said, I showed you all the other options you can do one very easy with a designer series paper just putting that behind there i do like that look or build your own scene which i did here and you'll just have to be very careful i do like the trees loose and not glued down um, so you'll just have to be very careful when you're putting this one in an envelope obviously if you do it this way it won't um <laughs> it won't catch those as much so just be very careful and the other ones were with we could use either the die cuts or so forth so um, I guess I could have done this in an emerald color but I, I, I like I like the different colors and I thought this kind of portrays like a snow scene as well okay so we're right at 35 minutes so these are the two alternatives i'm going to share with you today i hope you like these i'm having a lot of fun with this kit um, i really love the bird and everything and if you have any questions or comments please leave those to me in the um below and the best compliment you can give to me is a thumbs up Subscribe to my YouTube channel and share this video with your other paper crafting friends. And I hope you found, if you're not subscribed to my channel, a reason to subscribe. And there will be an easy button at the end of this video where you can do so. And until my next video, I hope everyone is enjoying this kit and has a good day. 
So thanks for joining me, everyone. I will be back soon with more alternatives using this kit. So until my next video, have a great day. Bye-bye.